if you want to play more than just a meta and branch out and experiment, here are five underplayed comps that I think can do very well currently on the 13-14 B patch. Garen. I'm pretty sure Garen is going to climb more and more importance in this patch because people recognize that he actually has some pretty decent matchups into some of the more common comps like invokers currently in the metagame. This is because a lot of comps like invokers uh, allow Garen to scale, gives them time because they try to win through the battle of attrition. And guess what? Garen is going to continue to scale with that rage blade. So it ends up being really, really powerful for him. So if you go back to the original build in the PBE, a lot of people go for rage blade and bloodthirster on Garen so that they can get that infinite stacks. And that does mean that Zeke's is probably pretty good, especially if you find an Aatrox, for example. But this could be any juggernaut. Let's say you find, you know, Darius 3 or just another Nasus. And with the buffs to Demacia, it ends up being that Lux is a pretty reliable secondary carry. So after you get your Garen items, you roll on seven, you three star Garen, find an opportunity to play around two star Lux and maybe other even damage dealers like Aatrox. If you do end up finding, you know, the opportunity to go for Juggernauts as well, Vertical Juggernauts is a very viable way you can play this comp just like we used to. Instead of saying playing around Galio, Swain, and Lux, instead you just basically try and play as many Juggernauts as you possibly can. In terms of positioning, you genuinely want to keep Garen in the middle of the map because if you put him on the side, he ends up just hitting a couple of units. You want to maximize that surface area and always make sure to pay attention to where Jarvan is going to jump. If you end up playing set, maybe you get an opportunity to have a crucial cast as well to knock things up. In terms of the augments, uh, you want to think about Adrenaline Rush because it just gives your Juggernauts more damage, which is really powerful. Plus, it just helps you get started with the Juggernaut count so you can feel like you play a strong board. This also goes with Petricide Tackles, which is kind of the other side of it, which is getting more Demacians and hey, you get the extra bonus of dealing more damage to Noxians, which is a fun little flavor thing, but ends up being quite powerful. Kiyun one time called this the most racist augment ever, which I thought was really funny. Kind of true because it ends up being really good against another race of a really strong comp. Another augment I want to give a shout out to is Indomitable Will because I've recognized that it ends up being kind of clutch in certain situations. If you are in a late game situation where you know your opponent wants to chain CC you with really powerful and annoying things like, you know, Jarvan or like a failure of rise, something like that, get something like Indomitable Will and then move Garen a little bit off to the weak side to try to snipe units and get the Indomitable Will. One really particularly powerful item from Orn is the Death Defiance, and that would replace Bloodthirster because you want to make sure to keep an item free for Garen. Do not, whatever you do, do not put a third item on Garen so that you don't get the Radiant item. And there's also some other things you can do, like Deathfire Grass Lux, if you want to try to get that extra burst. The Legend I would probably recommend to play this as well is if you do want to try to force this comp to go back to Twisted Face so you can get the Pandora's items. Because ultimately, these items do really matter, and the earlier you can get them, the better. Problem is that uh, the Twisted Fate Legend does offer you some awkward things with the complete item on Tier 2 and Tier 3, so just keep that in mind. It's not going to be easy. In terms of early game buildup, I really wouldn't play this comp unless you get like an early Garen in general, because you just want to build around him as your primary game plan. If you want to pivot into Garen, that makes it a lot more difficult. So I only recommend playing this if you have a really good spot for Garen, which usually means you get the orb plus an item component that makes sense for him, like a bow or like a rod. But let's say you do end up having that spot. You end up trying to play around the Bastion aspect of this and maybe link to support Garen as best as you can. So let's say you find Tarek to connect with Poppy. Then you can play a Soraka at level five. So that way you can link to the Invoker and the Targon. At level six, make sure you're getting that Juggernaut as best as you can. And then at level seven, you're able to kind of do whatever you want. Let's say you cut Poppy and Soraka. You tech in the Sona so you can get the attack speed buff plus another Another juggernaut and then maybe that ends up having you cut Tarek and then you can just play a, another juggernaut like Darius and this is going to be the most common type of board that you end up playing you do have an opportunity to play around a, a bunch of Demacian units let's say you don't have the Galio and you hit an early Jarvan instead you can just play another strategist and multicast with like Teemo temporarily and that's what makes Garen kind of interesting because you notice that I didn't even go into the five Demacia but you're totally free to do that if you don't hit the Warwick and the Darius and let's say you just hit that Galio and you have a Poppy too. You can just play this for a while. This does end up making that Demacia plus one is pretty good. I've personally never seen a seven Demacia variation, but I've heard a lot of top players insist that it's okay and pretty good. In fact, if you can get it, because this gives you a bunch of resistances on your Garen. And then eventually you find things like Lux and you want to play that Swain in so you can get that Strategist plus the Sorcerer. So you would end up cutting that Poppy instead and you have a board like this. One thing to note I do want to point out is that in the new patch, it is based off of items and then the most recently played. That's the tiebreaker no star levels nothing along those nonsense of what we used to do before just simply replace the unit so you can see for example let's say you had the radiant element on garen right let's say you just you know put like some kind of radiant item on him whatever let's say you get them like a radiant morello unlocks and you just really don't want it uh, and you already have something on garen you can just take out
out like Jarvan and put Jarvan back in and it'll give him a random item. So maybe he gets like Radiant Vow. And you're like, wow, that's really good. And the same thing actually goes the other way. Let's say you go to Jarvan and you get like, you know, Radiant Bramble. And it's like, okay, that's not really what I want. You can just take Lux out, put her back in. And then you'll see her have like, you know, Radiant Archangels. Wow, a lot of AP. That's pretty good. But you remember that it has to be tied in number of items. So if, you know, she has one item, let's say she has Gunblade and then he has Vow, it has to be a tie before you had that tie break be the recently played. Tali is the next comp I want to talk about, mainly because she's transformed a lot since the last video I did on her. Primarily the fact that people have recognized that you don't need double trouble in order to play her because you can find multiple copies of Talia through other things. For example, if you have Trickster's Glass on Talia, this is a way for you to get a second Talia and then use that as a way to get all of your knockups. And this also applies to set as well. So if you do find a second Trickster's Glass somehow with Orn items, then you can just play a set with Trickster's Glass. And the stats aren't even half bad because it just gives him a good amount of armor magic resistance as well another way that you can get it is a concept called over rolling which is instead of making the three star talia what you do is you lock the shop and then replace talia with a weaker unit and then roll during combat so that way you can get as many talias as you can and the reason why this is important is because if you do make a three star unit of a champion you can't find it in your shop for the rest of the game if you make talia three you're not going to be able to find any more talias but if you roll during combat the game technically says that you don't have talia three even though you have a Talia 3 equivalent on your bench and so you can roll a lot of gold and try to find more copies of Talia in this instance you end up going down from say like 40 50 gold all the way down to like 10 to 20 maybe even down to zero so you can find as many Talias as possible in crazy situations you might even have a board where you just play as many Talias as possible because you just have a three-star Talia like here and then you have another two-star Talia with another one-star Talia and then this one holds another Trickster's Glass and believe it or not this is like a level seven board that ends up summoning another copy of Talia so you just have what five Talias I mean if you have this Trickster's Glass all of a sudden you can fit all this in level six and by the way this also combos with something really funny which is endless hordes if you do end up having a bunch of copies of Talia you can just keep slapping things like Trickster's Glass and copy her so it makes a lot of sense when I say that Orn is a really good legend to play specifically for this composition because you get access to a lot of really good Orn items to make Talia's power very strong too healthy is still a really good augment to play around because you just play a bunch of the two costs and then social distancing is just an example of way to get power through flat ability power and that's because you generally want things like the Talia to crit strike as much as you can off that AP also worked with double trouble because double trouble gives you a lot of AP source there's a positioning generally just try to keep set a little bit safer towards the middle because you do want to cast more than one time if you notice that one set for example is not casting a lot because you're playing two of them just try to sandwich it between the other set and make sure that he can get the guaranteed cast off by the way I think a lot of people think about double trouble they want to play like multiple Teemos let's say instead you play you find another copy of Teemo or you find another copy of Swain this ends up being a situation where it's actually not that strong because if you think about what double trouble gives you it's a lot of things like attack damage and armor magic resistance Teemo doesn't care about that Swain doesn't actually really care about that either so you might as well just replace them with other things at the top end like a Jarvan or maybe an Azir and let's say you're not necessarily playing the double trouble variation you don't have this extra set you can actually just play a Shrima in this spot and just go for Nasus and all of a sudden you start to see how everything pieces together through the traditional Shrima board but you're going through a lot of strategists and Talia in terms of the priority list of how you're actually playing this comp a lot of times you have to remember that you need good items and good economy so while you try to hold these four units as much as you can chances are you're probably gonna actually lose streak early because you don't really have a strong board if you're just playing like Timo one Talia one Swain one if you want to play a high tempo board usually you end up going for a more traditional route say around Cassiopeia and Renekton and then play around like a cheap bruiser such as Cho'Gath and you give Cassio all the Talia items that you would end up giving her so like Shojin and JG so that way Cassio can deal the damage and then buy time until you eventually find a Talia for the roll down and in this case you end up finding say like a Teemo so you get the multicaster which is not that big of a deal but it helps and this is because the multicaster is much more important once you get everything online swing at level six and then you end up replacing and selling everything and rolling down for the exact board of Talia Talia set set and Swain Teemo if you do end up lose streaking a lot of times you're going to play stuff like this where it's just like two Talias on the board while you're making 10 or 20 gold maybe you end up playing only set as well so that way you have these three units and as a reminder it's okay to just play you know three units out of the four you possibly can so that way you're making the economy interest because none of the other units matter but try not to win loss win loss so if you do end up having a situation where you snap your losing streak try to see if you can win the next round or two so you can close out the straight just remember that streaking is important so let's say you lose three but 
but you win your 2-5 stage. Try to win your last one, so that way you're on a consistent streak. By the way, if you find a spatula, a lot of people feel, you know, like you can play like Shirima Emblem. Maybe you find Shirima on set. One thing that I don't want people to sleep on is the concept of just playing for Juggernaut. It also just got recently buffed a little bit. So if you do find, you know, Nasus and Swain, it is worth chasing another Juggernaut unit. So that way you can get uh, the consistent front line. So if you spike, say, a Aatrox, it's very, very good. And this is a board that actually potentially could top two, maybe even win games if you get everything online. One of my favorite comps to play for in terms of the vertical trait is going up high to seven Shirima. I think that seven Shirima is really underrated and particularly good if you can get a really high HP tank and seven Shirima online very stable. Generally speaking, right now, failure is so good that you probably want to just play the three three failure if you can and squeeze it in with the seven Shrima. but chances are unless you get plus one failure or plus one Shrima, that's not going to be happening in terms of the board variation just look at what makes really strong frontline and the backline you want to play around if you're hitting a lot of auctions you can just go ahead and lean into auction and ash and play around dead eye if you hit early azirs you can instead of playing around ash and sejuani play around strategist until you're able to get them online it is important to note that ultimately you do want to get the failure i do think this is the highest cap version of this composition but if you do have to make do with whatever you got and maybe even transition back over towards say a strategist lux you could totally do that if you end up hitting that situation you instead you just cut sejuani and ash and you go for jarvan and that lux instead and in this case you would cut cassiopeia to play the usual stuff which is the garen and in this instance if you end up hitting the shirima emblem you put it on jarvan if you can and give him items so that way you can repeatedly cast usually if you hit seven shirima plus a full tank jarvan he'll cast two maybe even three times in a fight and then it's just over. I don't actually have seven Shreema right now, so I'm just going to put on this Talia. But as you can see, this is a level nine. So usually you need a lot to go right to get something like seven Shreema. In terms of the augments you want, obviously, if you can get a plus one Shreema crest, that'd be really, really good. If you don't get a Shreema crest, I don't advise going for vertical Shreema. Ascension is really, really good because you're trying to stall the fight anyway. So the longer the fight goes, the more damage you're going to deal. In fact, it kind of just makes sense because Shreema says ascend. So you might as well just get that extra Ascension bonus. And then Transfusion is really good. It's a, a combat augment you can get through vladimir as well so as you can tell the legend recommendations maybe vagar or vladimir would be really strong with this kind of setup in terms of positioning make sure jarvin's on the same side as the carry so cataclysm can stun them Cassante is always want to be in front of the most important tank especially tanks that are position dependent like Tarek. would be really good to kick him so that way he's not even really buffing anything or rather shielding anything nasus generally stays in the center because you want him to be the center of focus of aggression if this ends up being the case and this also applies to if you cut this version and you play the frail yard instead in this instance, you want to keep Sidwani with something, you know, pretty powerful, like maybe a Redemption and maybe her own Warmog and keep her next to Nasus so she can get that healing and that true damage for Akshan to burst through. If you do end up hitting an Orin item, the usual stuff is pretty good, whether it's Eternal Winter. I think Anima Visage is also surprisingly really good because of the HP regen that stacks onto itself with a really strong tank like Nasus. Zonius is very good on Azir. He ends up being the best user of this item. If you do end up hitting something like Mana Zane, Mana Zane is something that you probably could get away with playing for something on Cassandra but in general it's not really a consistent item so I would be very careful about playing it don't sleep on randomant either because it can be really good with the maximum HP that you gain and if you're able to get a bunch of high HP targets then this randomant will end up being very high value because the fights drag on for so long remember to always keep Akshan on the opposite side of carries because he aims at the farthest target away so if you know that your opponent's playing you know like the Zeri in the top left corner or a Lux themselves try to have Akshan isolate and target them there's actually a couple of interesting things that people are experimenting with in positioning which is to go into corner so that way they leave Akshan open to shoot down the middle. I talked about this in the other video as well. So definitely experiment with your positioning a little bit if you want to feel like Akshan can get really good snipes down the middle. Also, I put Lissandra like back here, but that only makes sense if you're keeping things in the middle. Otherwise, generically keep uh, Lissandra in the top two rows. In terms of early game buildup, if you do end up finding a spot where you can play around the Shrima emblem pretty early, you can put it on a pretty decent holder like Galio because he ends up having a lot of synergy with his damage reduction and that max HP gain. And if you don't really want to play around things like the Bruiser with Vi, you can always just stack other things that are pretty beneficial, like maybe the Soraka goes in here, and then you can play Tarek instead. And from here, you notice that you can probably play like a fourth Invoker, you can play another Bruiser, another Bastion. You have a lot of flexible options here here at your disposal and Cassiopeia in this instance would be holding all of your AP items and make sure you get things like spark if you end up focusing on your AP if you don't end up hitting something like this core instead you hit a early Akshan instead you want to play around that in this case you would play Ash with Akshan and just probably play a bruiser in the front line to hold something
something like the Sharima emblem. And that way you have Akshan scaling. At five, you maybe add, say, the Alessandra for the Frail Yard. But if not, then maybe just add like another Bruiser or something. At level six, I mean, if you're able to high roll and you find the Sejuani, obviously Sejuani would be really, really good because then you just replace the Vi immediately. But another variation that you could play for your front line, let's say you're not hitting things like Lissandra and you just want to hit cheap units, is you can play around Bruisers. Vi, Cho, Rek'Sai, and just play around four Bruiser, two Deadeye with a Sharima emblem. Probably puts it on uh, Rek'Sai here in this spot. And this is totally fine to play at level six. And hey, maybe in level seven, you just find like a Kaisa randomly. And now you're just playing all of a sudden Void and Kaisa's holding your Azir items with, you know, Gunblade, for example, and Shiv, Shoujin. Okay, Shoujin's not particularly really good, but if you play Kaisa for whatever reason, maybe you end up needing that. So in this case, you'd probably cut something like the Sharima emblem on the Rek'Sai side and you put it on Kaisa instead. So these are just some variations that you can play uh, on top of going just the build up. But the more standard version that you're going to be expected to play is just to keep adding more Shurima as you can go. So a lot of times in the early game, at, you know, level five, you're just going to probably add like another Shurima. And then at level six, you just add another one again. And five Shurima is actually pretty decent if you're able to get, again, those HP on the front line. So that way you can ascend everybody. Because otherwise, it doesn't really matter if you ascend things like the Cassiopeia and Talia that don't hold items. And that means it's just going to be on Akshan for value. A lot of times people end up slamming things like Sunfire and Spark, both for tempo and for, you know, just the damage that it can generate, which is not a bad thing, but it's a keep in mind that if you do this, it ends up making your comp struggle to have defensive items later in the game. Gwen Flex is actually one of my favorite ways to currently play TFT because it's just really cool. It's almost like classic TFT of whatever you hit, you just play and you lean into the momentum of whatever's coming your way. A lot of times this ends up happening because either one, you are win streaking with a lot of tempo, you're pushing levels, and then you look around, and you see like everyone's holding on to your favorite units like Lux or are your other contested units that you're going to be playing for or two you hit an early Gwen and you want to convert off of that into a fast eight and stabilize or potentially even a fast nine and so if you end up hitting something like level up or caretakers favors thing that helps you push levels and rewards you for being able to have a good economy then you end up wanting to play around Gwen and Aatrox as your center pillars of your game plan from here you have several different packages that you can play it's very similar to Dragon King which is a really good video that you should watch in case you've missed out what Dragon King playstyle is essentially you play around on Aatrox and Gwen plus a Shadow While and then build another primary carry and another really good tank. And so that's what you're looking for when I say stabilize on eight, which is you want to roll for another primary on the bottom left. For example, the extra primary would be like a Kaisa that has, you know, Shoujin plus Giant Slayer and maybe like, you know, some AP. This is often one of the most common ways that you can play around her or you can just go around Callista instead because Callista is also a really good holder of some of these items. If you always hit Senna, you're always playing Senna. So make sure you just tech that in because she's really good with the shielding. The top right is like a way that you can potentially link into some other damage build. So let's say instead of of playing around these challenger core you hit Karm, Lissandra, Sejuani maybe you find another bruiser you can just lean into that and then just play Tarek to help bridge everything together I've also seen some crazy variations that play around Lux where you do like a Lux Tarek Gwen Aatrox and then you just flex around that as a core concept maybe you find Demacia so you play like a Jarvan instead so as you can tell it starts to get kind of crazy so just make sure to play around Gwen and Aatrox and whatever you're able to hit as a stable two star remember you're not trying to hard force a specific set of units you want to play whatever you can upgrade first two star units are just better than one stars and the most important thing is to save your economy so you can go to nine to play five cost units that is partially why it's considered flex is because ultimately you don't want to be rolling past like 20 or 30 gold in a lot of these instances because you need to save up that gold and economy to go to nine as best as you can so let's say you get to nine and you have these three core pieces that you want to play around like Gwen Aatrox and Senna make sure that you're playing around some of the good legendaries like R for example which is really good and you can always tie her in with frontline with like Tarek and Shen for example and that you get the invoker in this instance so you can play around a really good rise and then fill out your cob with you know like a random scion one or maybe even just good four cost frontliners as well like you can add in the Nasus for juggernaut actually yes I didn't really talk that much in depth about Gwen items so the most important thing is you have one defensive item one AP item and then one damage amplification item so for example one of Gwen's best items is Archangel Staff because she tends to scale as the fight goes on and she's shielding herself so it's really sustained damage throughout the course of the fight Titans ends up being a really good all-arounder stat on her because it buffs the shields with the armor and MR as well as gives her a bunch of stats offensively 
and then give her some healing as well so a lot of times people pick like gunblade because she's able to get to the back line convert and heal your tank so she can anchor the composition but if you don't find it you can just play like you know bt titans is a really classic one or maybe even a hodge the point is these items don't really matter because remember tempo get that wind shriek get that economy stabilize get to level nine it caps really high because if you can get to two star legendaries you'll just win the game and then in terms of legendaries just like the expected things like blue buff on ari is really good shojin on senna is fantastic Aatrox is surprisingly really good if you're able to get like, you know, some good AD items in like BT, Titans, Deathblade. If you get Heimerdinger, remember that you do really want to go for triple burn right now as your maximum DPS, but Heimerdinger is very expensive. So make sure you're not just putting all your resources into Heimerdinger and the rest of your board is not upgraded. You can pretty much experiment and try a bunch of different four and five cost combinations. Just, just have fun, experiment and see what works for you. But most importantly, do not let Gwen die and keep her close to Aatrox. So that way she gets that HP and that Omnivamp boost. In rare instances, you might be able to frontline Gwen, but for the most part, you always keep her second row. In terms of how you actually get to the spot with the build up a lot of times it's usually through like an early Callista drop or you have say a plus one shadow wilds and you're able to get things like four shadow wilds very very quickly well, let's just say we're playing irelia so we have a little bit more front line we hit the shadow wild emblem and all of a sudden we have four shadow wilds this is a really strong way that you can build up all the way to hit gwen but this is probably the most obvious way you go into gwen a lot of times you end up doing something like Instead of these, you play, say, the Ionia course. You have Jin plus the set. Let's say you hit like a random Oxhound on five, and all of a sudden you're like, hey, this might be like an AD game, but you know, Callista is like your strongest champion. So you play around her, you give her generic items. You could also, for example, just play around for Challenger as well. So get all those Challengers in early. Let's say you hit Gwen really early on level five, then you can just pretty much cut whatever core you're playing around so like for example we we're playing around ionia with Jin, but just take out that Jin, put items on gwen callista instead and then at six you know tech in a challenger instead and it's okay if you're not playing the ionia because ultimately you have gwen which is a really strong champion to find early game and then you start building items on her you know titans gs death cap whatever else you can get the nice thing about gwen too is her traits really don't matter very much in the sense that she can still perform well even if she doesn't have shadow Isles or slayer activated but try to see if you can get those slayers going so let's say in this instance instead of playing around you know the usual ionia core of the Jin, you just find like an early z2 you can have that be a wave you can connect the slayer and then the previous example if you have say the shadow isle emblem you could put shadow isle on anybody and then find a way to get viego in and then all of a sudden you have a or shadow isle plus rogue and this is again this is not like the most powerful board that you can ever build but something to think about as you're kind of putting your board together the last composition i want to talk about is something that's kind of new and developing right now which is Void Reroll. This is basically predicated off of like the amazing amount of stat buffs to both Cho'Gath and Malzahar. So people have been rerolling it as well as playing like a Vertical Void or a Vertical Bruiser depending on what they're hitting. That's why if you look at the augments, I'm picking things that directly relate to what I'm trying to hit. So if I take Ancient Archives, I hit a plus one Bruiser, I hit a plus one Void. That kind of helps me get that certain direction that I want. Uh, if you also have things like Golden Ticket, it helps you hit that Malzahar and that Cho'Gath really fast. Another thing to consider is that Void Reroll is heavily tempo oriented because you play Void, which is a really strong early game synergy. So chances are you're not going to be able to five loss very easily just having things like a plus one Void. And so what you end up doing is you try to aim for that five win streak use that gold and tempo to hit Cho'Gath and Malzahar 3, start snowballing your lead and either lead into Rek'Sai with, you know, the traditional Bruisers and Freljord, or go into Vertical Void and then cap out with the Legendary. The Legendary that you cap out with generally kind of depends on, one, whatever you're able to hit, but if you do end up hitting things like Ari, just give her a bunch of AP items like that blue buff and, you know, some kind of AP source. The other for Heimerdinger would be more attack speed to help scale the turret. Turret will help make up some of your damage losses, so I would recommend Triple Mechano, which is three burns but if you don't have it and you want to go for a shrink instead you can go ahead and play two burns plus one shrink there's a couple of really interesting variations that you can also play if you somehow find an ionia emblem and you are playing ari with like this void core you can play ionia emblem on belveth and get through ionia that way pretty nifty way to get ionia belveth into a composition that you don't usually do at the top end if you do end up playing the bruiser variation you still want some of the other combat augments like titanic strength and other things that really make the bruisers really shine gargantuan resolve and some of the other usual suspects i'll also say that positioning baron nasher is actually kind of important if you end up playing a bruiser centric oriented composition then make sure you have a couple of other things that are pretty valuable like a redemption so you can keep your bruisers healing 
healing a big percentage of their HP. And then try to have Rek'Sai kind of on the outside with this Void Remora basically swapping into these spots to get a good pop up. And that way Rek'Sai can potentially wrap to the back line. Alzahar is also worth itemizing. Blue buff is his best item and you can give him some AP, maybe even a JG. Button Blade is also pretty decent in this spot as well. So it gives you an opportunity to heal up things like the Rek'Sai. As you can see though, you probably want to take in a Sorcerer. So, you know, add in that Lux or that Ari. If you do end up playing an eight void variation, a lot of times you play Yasuo to link with the challenger for Kaisa, but it could be any challenger really. You could even play Kalista uh, as a way to add more backline DPS. Positioning does matter a lot with the composition, which is one of the harder things to play around eight Baron because each matchup kind of depends on what you really want from it. But some matchups, you don't mind Baron being in the front line, tanking, dealing a bunch of AOE damage. And other matchups, you actually just want him to be straight up in the second row while kind of stalling out and letting these other units take the damage. An example would be if you're going up against Lux that has a high amount of single target burst, you don't want Baron Nasher in the corners or in the front row because then Lux is going to assassinate it very quickly. And then all of a sudden Baron's losing 80%, maybe even just dies and not able to get the, the big casts off. It's also really easy to get shrouded in a bad way in this composition because of the way you end up stacking. So try to always keep things like the Belveth and the Kaisa away so that they don't get completely shrouded and hit by a bunch of AOE. You can also do backline Baron if you want. This is usually an option you do if the matchup is really slow. So that way you have a lot of damage come through and you're confident your front line won't crack. And these items, by the way, on Cho'Gath that I'm putting are just generically tempo oriented ones because you're trying to win streak and capitalize off this HP. But the reality is you can probably justify a bunch of different items on a lot of these champions. And that's partially what makes this comp really interesting right now is that I don't think we understand what the proper items on Cho'Gath is or even Malzahar or even if we're supposed to chase Malzahar. I will say that I think uh, more stuff is better. So if you end up having like ZZ Rots on Kassin or Rek'Sai, for example, that helps stall for your Belveth and Kaiser to ramp up. If you get to nine somehow and you play Ari for, you know, an extra source of damage, feel free to just toss in something like an Ionia Emblem on Belveth as well if you somehow get that. Alternative Alternatively, I think Aatrox is pretty reliable and is, is pretty strong as a way to build into this composition late game as well. The build up is pretty straightforward, which is you're just going to look for early voids of any kind and get that void snowballing as fast as you can. Try to slam some tempo items to get the streak because you're going to try to use your reroll oriented things in order to hit those resources pretty quickly. So a lot of times people are going for, you know, an early spark, for example, on Cho'Gath. Maybe you just have a bunch of defensive items. So you go for like, you know, Bramble and Declaw even just as a way for you to make it very difficult for your opponent to deal with. And then you throw all your AP items on Malzahar just for now and something that you can probably scale with late in the game. These are just examples though. Just feel free to experiment with however you want. Level four, you probably play another bruiser here. So ideally you can hit Rek'Sai so that way you can get for a another void and you can sub out this Kassad instead for another sorcerer. A comic sorcerer you can often play is Oriana so you can help keep that Shogath and Rek'Sai alive. But if you don't hit Oriana, feel free to play a Swain. The Swain gives you an opportunity to tie into a strategist of some kind, usually that Teemo to help give you a little bit of anchor early. But remember that if you end up playing something like the Bruiser variation, like because you want to go into Rek'Sai because you have like really good augments or items for it and you have like early game Titans for Rek'Sai, you can just go ahead and reroll for these three Bruisers at level four. And then at level five, just finally add Vi. From here, you pretty much just add in the usual stuff for six Bruiser if you end up going in that variation. So if you find Sejuani, you add the Sejuani. And if you find the Scion, you play the Scion because if you can get six Bruiser, you're in a good spot. If you want to go into the void vertical instead, just lean into the strategies that make sense with what is your best unit. So if you're playing around like Malzahar, because you're playing around that void tempo, then you're looking at Taric. Then instead of these Rek'Sai, you're playing Kassadin at four, and this is a pretty reasonable board. At five, you can add in another Bruiser. In this case, it'd be Rek'Sai. And if you do have a plus one void of some sort, just feel free to throw in like the void onto whatever unit makes sense. So in this case, it's Taric. And then you roll until you hit things like this Vel'Koz. And Rift Herald is very good on stage three in particular because it's just a lot of stats to deal with and a bunch of CC. So definitely make sure that Rift Herald is getting towards the value of crashing to the furthest enemy. And then level seven, you obviously go for Kai'Sa. And this is where things like medium and shopping and other high value things that help you get access to higher tier champions and get Kai'Sa and Belveth and voila, you're here at Baron Nasher. I have a sneaking suspicion that there might be a sorcerer variation that you could play with this. Like maybe you go to six void and you play a bunch of sorcerers, but I'm not entirely sure yet. So feel free to experiment. Let me know how it's working with you guys in the comments below and 
hopefully we get to the bottom of what makes this comp really good because i've seen it succeed at high ladder but i personally never pulled it off myself so i'm curious what everyone thinks legends i recommend to play with this are pretty open-ended i don't really think you want Lee Sin, but you could tell me that honor roll is really good because of the one cost that you want to hit with mouse heart chogath and potentially renekton otherwise i'd recommend just the usual stuff like poro orn etc that everyone else is playing speaking of orn if you do end up hitting the orn items that you want to play around i think eternal winter and anima visage is actually two really good items on chogath if you do end up playing Rex I reroll consider the death defiance on her and Malzahar is just good with items I think like the Deathfire grasp and infinity force is surprisingly pretty reliable on him and if you somehow like find your way in playing the Velkaz don't forget Mana Zane is one of his best items so there you have it my five comps that I think are underplayed but have a lot of potential currently in the metagame on the 1314 b patch let me know what you guys think in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next one